did you know that the siblings Jipiri and Lebongu are patriarchs of the Luo race in Uganda and Kenya, separated over a spear and a beard? The Luo legend lives up to date, evoking fear, reverence and lessons. NTV Sudil Birhanga was recently in Pakwach and he brought to the spotlight as the area to view the hybrid eclipse and explored some of the historical and cultural sites which remain unexploited. This famous bridge is what welcomes you as you enter Pakwach town in Nebi district. The name Pakwach is derived from a Luo word, Kwach, which means leopard. It is believed that during the early days, this place was a jungle and home to many leopards. Just a stone throw from the bridge is a cultural center that shares the same premises with the military barracks off the shores of the Albert Nile. Its fence is made out of papyrus, but nobody dares force their way in without permission. Inside the shrine are some of the regalia which legend has the two brothers, Jipiri and Labongo, used. The most symbolic are these two axe heads and a spear that are a reminder of the bitter separation between the two brothers, Jipiri and Labongo, who saw never to meet. With, the, with the, our culture, when somebody get the axe, one just to cut you with, he should pay you, he should do that, pay good. This is back cloth that comes from a tree called Yen Bongo, meaning the first tree. And its botanical name is called the Fisher's Tree. This kind of back cloth is what Jipiri and Labong used to cover themselves because at the time there were no clothes. Supplying. Their father Olum and mother Nyilaka said to have given birth to the two brothers in Misiri, Egypt. Like other Luos, they migrated southwards. At the time they arrived in Kwach, there was a chief Puvungu already living east of the Nile and was practicing hunting as a means of survival. Their father Lum gave a spear to Labongo, the elder son, and asked him to guard with his own life. Among the Luo, the spear is an instrument of authority and the symbol of power and leadership. It is a mark of respect for the firstborn and heir to the family. The feud started when the elephant invaded a garden of cow peas belonging to Labongo while he was away from home, GP responded to the alarm by picking a spear from Labongo's hat. Only after he speared the elephant, it fled, did GP realize he had picked the ancestral spear. It is an enemy because we don't eat it. We don't eat, eat it even, the elephant. And that was the beginning of the poisonous relationship between the two brothers. When you want to separate it with your, with your brothers, when you put an axe, you will not meet again with the, your brother, or you will not eat together with your brother. Despite pleading to find a replacement and a constant nagging by Labongo, Jipir embarked on a treacherous journey, which took him months to find the spear and returned with beautiful royal beads. Among the central lure, Royal beads are a symbol of beauty and elegance. Matters spurred out of control when one of Labongo's children swallowed one of the beads. Jipil avenged by demanding for his beads, forcing Labongo to cut up his child's stomach to find the missing bead. Labongo then accused of Jipil of forcing him to slaughter his own child like an animal. Say that, ah, now my, my son is dead. My son is dead. Now we are going to meet again. I'm also going, and you also, you go. But Vungu, the elder brothers, remain here. The two acting on the advice of another brother, of Vungu, separated for life. In, in Lord Jodongo. He's buried in Lord Jodongo at uh, Padot side. And Nyabongo also go and die in the, in the, in the Choli. Ovungu's tomb allegedly lies under these trees, also said to be a raw material for making back cloth. Many people do not know what actually lies under these shrubs, but briefly take shelter under it from the scorching sun.
The two buried an axe at the point which they separated. The area evokes both fear and reverence. There you go down. <laughs> Anybody seeking to go down the slope to the separation point must seek for permission. At the time of the two brothers' separation, it is believed that GP took the western side to the areas of Nebi and also got married or intermarried with the Madi group of people and gave birth to the Arul tribe. Then Labong is said to have taken the eastern route, which goes through here to some parts of northern Uganda, that is Gulu, uh, some areas of Soroti, and also got intermarried there and gave birth to some tribes like the Itesot, that is what people say here, and also the Kumam. But when Labong reached in the areas of Masindi and other neighboring places, it is said or believed that is from that area where he formed the ruling tribe or clan called the Luo Babito in the Bunyoro Kitala kingdom. So entrenched is the legend here that the people living in do not draw water from the spot. Even now, if you try to face water here, you are going to disappear and you will not come back again. Every 18th of February, rituals are performed here and reports of sighting of human-like figures is common. And you will see the snake coming just to, 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 to get the sheep up thrown to them. The biggest snake you've ever seen, that kind of snake. At the time of doing this ritual, I used to stay in the water one hour without getting up. Walter Omoti recites a prayer mumbling words, barely audible, but prides himself of knowing life under the waters of the Nile. If you die? If I die, uh -huh. I'm going there. Isn't it hell, my friend? Huh? Huh? The down one is most beautiful than earth. Cities are there. The, the beautiful city, even Kampala is not preparing that kind of city. Even, uh, even Kampala is not most beautiful than that city. The Downer city, that is a city. Have got tarmac road being divided into three with white colors, white colors, white colors. Jipil and his family crossed the river Nile to the western side at Pakwach and became ancestors of the present day Alu of northwestern Uganda and the larger Alu population in northeastern DRC. Labong and his family remained on the eastern side of the Nile and became ancestors to the Acholi people. The story of Jipil and Labongo still lives but also acts as a reminder that revenge is perilous and can cause strong nations to fall. Sudil Biarhanga, NTV.